this video is going to be a little different. We're going to be looking at one of my own projects that I'm calling local GPT. Now, this project lets you chat with your own documents on your own device using open source GPT models. Once you download the required embeddings and uh, the LLM, no data leaves your computer and everything is 100% private. Now, this project is inspired by this another amazing project called Private GPT, which implemented an information retrieval system using local embeddings. There were uh, two things that I wanted to improve on the Private GPT. In the original uh, implementation, they were using Llama CPP embeddings. And for LLM, they were using GPT for all J model. These are great choices. However, both of them run on CPU and that's why it is extremely slow. Now, in my local GPT version, we're going to be replacing both those components. First, we're going to be using instructor embeddings, which are state-of-the-art embeddings at the moment, and it runs on GPU. And then for the LLM, we're going to be replacing it with Wakunya 7B, which is one of the best open source LLM available. Now, the great thing about uh, both of them is that they run on GPU and it's going to be much faster. You can easily replace uh, both LLM as well as the embedding models with anything that you want. So for the rest of the video, I am going to walk you through the installation process as well as we will have a detailed walk through the code to see how it's set up and how you can make changes if you want. Now, please keep in mind that this project is under active development, so things will change. However, the basic structure of the project is going to remain consistent, so you will be able to run this using the instructions in this video. So let's walk, let's have a walk through the code. But before that, let me show you the architecture of how this project is set up. Now, the main question is going to be, why do you want local or private GPT? So apart from the privacy concerns, one great thing about these type of tools is that it lets you use your documents as source of information for LLMs. So basically, you are augmenting the knowledge base for the LLMs uh, because they don't have access to your own data. Now, in order to implement this, uh, here's the basic architecture that I'm using. You might have seen this or a similar diagram. So I will quickly walk through this. Now, there are two components. The first uh, component is implemented in this Python file called ingest.py. Uh, in this case, we are ingesting or feeding in uh, information from our local files into the knowledge base of our local GPT. The second component is implemented in run localgpt.py, and this lets the user interact with the information or the knowledge base that was created in the first step. So we are going to be looking at both of these files in a lot more detail. First, let me show you how you can set this up on your local machine. And then we will walk uh, through the code base. So for that, first go to um, this code button and uh, click on this copy button. So it will basically uh, copy this uh, GitHub repo location. Next, we will open an instance of Visual Code Studio. So I have already created a um, local virtual environment that I'm calling uh, local GPT. But if you want to create one, so you can do it by simply typing in conda create dash n and then um, give it the name of the local environment. So in my case, it's local GPT. For this to work, you will need to have conda installed on your local machine. So in this case, it's asking me uh, a conda environment already exists. Remove the existing environment. So I'm going to say no. So now in order to activate it, I'm going to type in conda um, activate and the name of my uh, virtual environment. All right, okay. Next, we want to clone the repo. So get clone. You will need to have git installed on your local machine for this. And just the clone the repo, right? So now we have everything locally installed. Now, the first thing that you want to do is you want to uh, install all the requirements. So here are the, all the requirements. Um, now, in order to install all the required packages, we're going to be using pip, so pip install dash r, and then um, requirements.txt, right? Uh, okay, so once you uh, run this command, it will start downloading all the required packages and installing them 
So once you uh, clone this repo, you're going to have this folder called source underscore documents. And you need to put all your PDF text or CSV files under uh, this folder. So currently, uh, there is an example document, the constitution.pdf, which is the constitution of the USA. But you will need to replace this with your own file uh, for it to work on your own data. Yep. Right. So first, let's look at the ingestion part. Now, if you are familiar with these concepts, you can skip ahead. Or if you want a lot more detailed uh, description of these, so watch this video. All right. So currently, the local GPT uh, supports PDF, text, and CSV files. This list is going to expand uh, with the time. But the basic idea is that we want to retrieve information from our own uh, local files. Uh, for that, we split them into smaller chunks because we cannot feed in, let's say, a 100-page document into an LLM. Uh, and then we compute embeddings on top of it. Uh, embeddings are basically uh, converting our documents into uh, a string of numbers or a vector of numbers. Instead of characters, you are just representing a specific uh, chunk or a document uh, by a vector of numbers. And using these embeddings along with the original documents, we create a uh, semantic uh, index, which is our basically uh, your database of the information that you have provided in the uh, text or PDF files. So in terms of the code, we call the main function. Now let's see what is happening, right? So it will first simply print the uh, um, path of the source directory and saying that loading documents from there. Then it uh, makes a call to this function load underscore documents. So let's look at this implementation. So this loads documents uh, receives the source directory, uh, basically the path to this uh, as an input. And uh, then it goes through the list of all the documents. So you can have multiple different uh, document types. And then it uses this uh, uh, function called load single document uh, to each to load each one of those document, right? So let's look at here, right? So currently, uh, as I said, we uh, only have support for uh, three different file types. So for each file type, when it receives a path to a new document, it checks whether it's a text, PDF, or CSV file, right? And depending on the type of the file, it will use a different uh, uh, data loader. So for text file, it's using text loader. For PDF, it's using PDF minor loader. And for CSV, it's using CSV loader. So essentially, you are simply going to get uh, a list of document paths, right? Or document loaders. Uh, we need to split them into smaller chunks so that um, our LLM can process them. In this specific case, I'm using a chunk size of 100, uh, 1,000, sorry. So this is the chunking process over here, right? And with an overlap of 200. Now, I go over these choices uh, in a lot more details in my other videos, so check them out. Then uh, what we do is we take the documents uh, and pass them on to this text splitter. So each of the document is going to be divided into multiple chunks. Now, the next part is that we need to compute embeddings uh, for each of the chunks. Now, in this case, we're using the instructor embeddings. So here you can actually replace it by any type of embeddings that you want. Uh, but I have found that the instructor uh, Excel embeddings works pretty good for uh, most of the applications. Now, uh, keep in mind that this is going to be not the most efficient. Uh, you can actually tweak um, the instructor embeddings even further for, uh, for your application. Um, think of it as a neural network so you can further fine tune it. Okay, so once the embeddings are computed, then we need to create our knowledge base. So for that, we are using Chroma DB. So uh, this takes your text documents, which are chunked. So these are the chunk documents and the corresponding embeddings and put them in a vector store. Uh, and it persists. So basically, uh, that means that you will be able to store them on your local drive so that you can use it for later on. All right, so that's uh, the first part of how you can create your um, vector store or database based on your own documents. Now, when you run this code, uh, you will see that it will create another um, index folder and under which you know, it is going to have all the uh, files related to your vector store. Okay, in order to run this, 
uh, you just need to type in python ingest.py. It's going to walk through the step-by-step -step process. Uh, it will first read your document, convert them into chunks, then compute embeddings and store them in your uh, local vector store. We are going to look at an example later on, but these are the type of messages that you would expect. Now, probably you notice you don't really need to set up anything at all. You don't have to set up a uh, .env file in here or even the path. Everything is taken care of automatically. Now, let's look at the second component. So let's say you have your knowledge base uh, ready and a user wants to interact with your data. So uh, you simply want the user to ask a question in natural language, then compute embeddings uh, for the question that you had based on the type of embedding models that you used do a semantic search on your knowledge base, right? And it will simply return the most relevant documents or chunks that are uh, present in your vector store. Uh, and then you use the original documents related to the chunks as a context for your large language model along with your question and you get an answer. Now let's look at how this actually looks like in the code. Now for that, we're going to be looking at the run uh, local GPT file. Now again, we start at the main function. So let's go in here. Now the first step is that it has to uh, load the embedding models again, just to compute embeddings for your question, right? So that's why we are embedding, uh, we are loading the uh, exactly the same model that we used for computing embeddings for our documents. Okay. Uh, next, we also need a knowledge base and uh, because that, that's where we are going to be asking questions from. So we also uh, load our vector store or knowledge base using the Chroma DB. Now, this is going to be the one that we created in the ingestion phase, and that's going to be uh, created as an index. Okay, next, um, not using this callback, so I'm going to just comment this out. All right, we need to load the LLM that we're going to be using. Okay, so let's see what's going on in here. Um, so for the load model function, we are loading a model, uh, in this case, that is Wakunia 7B uh, from Hugging Face. Now I'm trying my best to make it modular. So if you want to try another model, you can just replace this line with the uh, model ID of that specific model. So let me show you an example. Um, so we will look at uh, this user, uh, Tom Jovens, or the block who is a legend when it comes to LLMs on Hugging Face. So just look for anything that supports the Hugging Face format. So for example, this model, right? Then you simply need to copy this model name and then uh, come here and replace it. Now, uh, currently uh, this will support uh, the Llama based models because we are using the Llama uh, tokenizer, uh, but you can easily replace it with other type of models that you want. Next, uh, we load the model using the Llama for causal LM. We got our model and then we are creating our pipeline. Now, since it's a decoder only model, that's why we're using the text generation. Then as, uh, pass on our model, tokenize it, and here's the maximum length. So depending on the model, you can actually change this. In this case, I think Wakunia 7B uh, supports only 2048, right? The temperature, I set it to zero. So because I don't want any creative answers, I want for the model to extract information from my document. And then there are a couple of other parameters that you can play around with. So we create the pipeline and then pass it to the hugging face pipeline function. And we get our local LLM. Now, uh, when we call this function, we will get our LLM. And then we're using a uh, lang chain for information retrieval where we pass on our LLM, uh, we are using the uh, stuff type chain, right? Then we are passing out the retriever that we created based on our vector store. Uh, and we are also asking it to return source documents. So basically where it's getting the information from. Okay, so we are basically uh, walking through these steps to get an answer. And then uh, the user asks a question. So there is a, this while loop if the user types an exit, it will break the loop and uh, you will get out of the program. Otherwise, there's going to be an infinite loop that is running, right? So let me quickly walk you through this. 
this is um, purely based on the private GPT code. So first, um, the user enter a query, right? Then we run that query through our uh, question answer retrieval chain. That will give us an answer in terms of the results that uh, the LLM found as well as the source documents. So next, we simply print both the question as well as the answer first. And then we go through one. So next, we simply print the question as well as the answer. And then we go through the source documents. So this was a lot of code. Now, let's go and watch this in action. In order to run this, you will need to type Python, then run underscore local GPT dot pi and then it will give you the user interface. So I'm going to switch to my other machine in order to run this part. Okay, uh, so once you run this, run local GPT, so you're going to be presented with this place where you can type in your prompt. So since we are working with the constitution of the United States, let's ask it a couple of very simple questions. So I'm gonna say how many states are in the USA? Uh, so here's the response from the model. There are 50 states in the USA. Then it also will give you some source documents. So you can actually go through the list of documents that it used. For example, it's um, uh, getting information from these different articles within the constitution. Now, as I said, it's under active development. So I'm going to be adding a lot of more features. So it's going to have support for more models as well as I plan to add a graphical user interface. You can simply drag your documents and um, chat with it. So a lot of cool uh, updates coming in in the future. If you would like to contribute to the project, create a PR and I would uh, integrate uh, your contributions. If you would like to support my work, there are quite a few ways. Uh, check out the description of the video. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section below. If you like the video, consider liking it and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so. And thanks for watching and see you in the next one.